our next talk up in this chunk is uh, about the new scoring features in autopsy that I mentioned earlier this morning uh, during my talk, which was kind of part of the themes that came in from uh, Cyber Triage. So we have Jay and Greg here from Basis uh, that will be talking first about how Cyber Triage uses its scoring and then how that's been kind of ported over and integrated into autopsy and Greg will uh, focus on that. So please take it over, Jay and Greg. All right. Thank you, Brian. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody else has their coffee and the mugs. Brian, I need that bug. All right, so uh, today we'll be talking about autopsy scoring and finding the relevant data uh, with analysis results. Um, with me, I have uh, Greg as my co-presenter. He'll be giving you all the details about autopsy and I will be giving you a little bit of an introduction into cyber triage and what we are doing and why uh, we contributed all the stuff to autopsy. So, let us get started. So high level agenda here, um, we'll be talking about um, what, what, the, what problem are we trying to solve? Um, and then, like I said, a brief introduction to cyber triage and how it utilizes scoring. Uh, if you have questions about cyber triage specifically, please feel free to just jump on Discord or uh, get in touch with us. And then um, we'll talk about some of the terms that we're using, you know, what is an analysis result, for example. Um, and we'll discuss some of the data model changes and how scoring is incorporated in autopsy. And then uh, how you can utilize um, scoring uh, when you write your own custom modules. So let's get uh, going. So what's the problem? The problem is that there's a lot of data, right? In IR cases, even some of the presenters before has alluded, there's just too much, uh, too much data. Devices are getting bigger. Uh, and we collect even more data and um, you're very data hungry. And with all this data, finding evidence that are pertinent to the case becomes even more harder. So our goal um, with the approach that we're trying to do is can we provide some sort of indicators? Can we, can we guide the user to finding the relevant, um, relevant things uh, for, for them? Make it go a little faster. Um, so, are we not we are not unique or we are not alone in this? Um, the problem of large amounts of data is pretty common. Um, Google solved this problem a long time ago, and they started scoring uh, or ranking uh, the pages that they think are most relevant um, to the to the search that you're doing. So our, our approach is similar. Uh, we we have some heuristics, um, and the user can upward and download them, and um, hopefully um, together with the system and the user kind of narrow down the search space and come to the conclusions quickly. So with that, let me just give you sort of a, uh, a brief background on what cyber triage is. Cyber triage is the easiest, the fastest, and the most agile incident response platform for intrusion cases. Uh, it makes your incident response efforts far more efficient and automated. Uh, using the concepts of scoring and then recommendations. Um, it's really, really fast and really, really accurate, and it's really easy to use. So this is kind of uh, our core tenants. Uh, with the 3.0 release of Cyber Triage, we have gone back to uh, sort of our roots, if you will, and started using autopsy as our core core model under the covers. Our database is fully an autopsy, autopsy database. Um, and Cyber Triage has a whole bunch of features that are outside of autopsy's uh, core competencies, such as scoring and, and a number of others that we have built over time. So now we're building all of that back into, into autopsy and releasing them um, back to the community. So this is why um, I'm so excited to talk about Cyber Triage here on an open source conference, even though Cyber Triage is a commercial product. So yeah, I know, right? Cyber Triage, well, where were you? So, what what are what do we do? So we, we have a collection tool, uh, so Triage application as a collection tool. Um, it is deployed on demand to live running endpoints or disk images, or if you have a memory image, and it collects artifacts that are that are relevant. And you can either send those artifacts directly to our server, or you can send it to an S3 bucket, um, or if you prefer USB, you can you can put it into that and then transport that back to the server. And once we get this data, we uh, start to prioritize it and aggregate it in our server. Um, and we use various scoring techniques uh, to, to classify these things um, 
And by things, I mean program runs, logins, files, uh, connections that are made from the system, users, et cetera. And we prioritize them as either bad items or uh, suspicious items. We also have a, a malware analysis engine built in um, that we, um, our service that we call up to, to do ma automatic malware analysis on the files that we're collecting. Um, so that's good. So we get a, a, a bunch of results and we expect the user to be able to um, either look over some of the suspicious ones and go, you know, that's really not suspicious because, you know, it's not interesting. Or the user might say, well, that is really suspicious and they select it. And immediately we start looking for things that are relevant in the context of the item that the user um, uh, user upvoted, if you will, and and pull out other relevant items that, that might be interesting. So that's the recommendation engine that we have built in into server triage. Um, and then finally, when, you, when you're done, um, you, have, uh, you have a bunch of artifacts that you think um, are interesting and you wanna generate a report um, and, and share with others. Um, we, we, have, we have that support too. We support HTML and CSV reports at the moment. Um, you can export it, uh, the entire collection, or you can just export pieces of it um, any way you, you wish to do. Um, so it's a bunch of screenshots just to give you an idea of, of how this looks like. So this is after, this is our dashboard after you have collected some data. Um, at the top left here, you have all the different items that we collected, so accounts, logins, and, and so on. And the system has automatically classified some of those items into suspicious or bad categories and here uh, up top you get sort of a high level um, dash you know high level uh, outcome of how many are bad or how many are uh, suspicious we also have a, a time mini timeline if you will there is a, a bigger timeline that that lists everything but there's also many contextual timeline that are only applicable to the items that are your you have marked or the system has identified as bad so this will kind of give you a context of, of when when the um, um, event occurred and you can uh, determine uh, if the item that you're looking at is suspicious or not. So let's take a look at what, what the system thought was bad. Um, so there's an EXE that ran, so it's, it's a program run type, and it found a malware. It's a pretty, pretty clear cut, right? There's a file that is bad. And up top here is, is a listing of all the items. Um, the bottom part kind of gives you more detail. So, you know, what is the file? When is the file created? Um, all of that kind of details. And as I said before, the contextual timeline. Um, so what is, an, what is an analysis and what does score have to do with all this? So when an item is marked as bad, initially in this particular example, the program ran out of uh, a temporary uh, folder and the system thing, you know, heuristics determine that this is likely notable and then we did another analysis, the malware analysis comes in and says, this is really notable because there is a malware on it. So this is a case where you have multiple analysis results that is pump, pushing uh, an artifact score up to, to being bad. Uh, here's another example where um, the program did run out of an unexpected path, but the, it, is, it doesn't have any malware. So this is probably uh, okay, this is a good item and the system automatically classifies it as good. Um, the user, as I said, can also upward. So initially it ran out of a uh, temp folder and there is no malware scanning result for this. Um, but the user thinks that this is really bad. And so the user upwards it and immediately uh, they are presented with uh, a recommendation for maybe, hey, there was a, a trigger task, as a, a scheduled task entry for this program to be run. So maybe you want to mark that as bad as well. So this is the, the recommendation uh, piece of it. So that, that sort of cyber triage, uh, very, very high level. Like I said, more details, please hop on to Discord. Many, many features we'd love to discuss with you. But anyways, so what is an analysis technique? Uh, an analysis technique is something that you, you, you know, is a, is, a, is a heuristic that you would run, right? Um, methods applied to artifacts to determine its, its relevance. Um, let's say you want to so you want to know if a binary is assigned. So that that could be an analysis technique, or uh, you want to run some static analysis on on a malware. Um, that could be that could be an analysis technique. 
an analysis technique leads to an analysis result. Um, so you could say, yep, it was signed by Microsoft or it wasn't. Um, there is a known ransomware signature found on the binary or not, and so on and so forth. So those are the results. Now, results inherently does not mean um, they're bad or good, they're just results. And each result could be tagged with their relevance. Um, so maybe a good hash hit has, is non-relevant. Uh, malware uh, signature might be relevant. Uh, signed by Microsoft might be you know, not relevant and so on. And a single artifact can be uh, tagged uh, or an analyzed in different ways. Uh, a, a single binary might have a Yara analysis on it, malware scanning uh, analysis on it, where it ran out of, so maybe there's a, a path that you wanna look for and so on and so forth. And you, you can aggregate all of those results to get a final aggregated score, which may, which may say that the item is relevant or not relevant. Um, so in summary, every artifact and file can have one or more analysis results. An aggregate score is applied to the individual results, uh, on the individual results. And you can focus mostly you know, on the ones that are bubbling to the top instead of having to go through um, all the artifacts that, are, that have been collected, uh, thereby making your um, uh, triage process uh, much faster. So with that, I wanna hand over to Greg um, to take you through the rest of the uh, presentation. So everything shown in the user interface relies on how the data is stored. So to accommodate these new scoring and analysis result features, the SleuthKit layer that both cyber triage and autopsy use has a new analysis result type. Uh, SleuthKit, which both autopsy and cyber triage use to store data, used to store Blackboard artifacts the same way. Now artifacts are split into two categories, analysis results, which represent the outcome of an analysis technique, and data artifacts, which represent extracted data. An example of a data artifact would be a web artifact extracted from a SQLite database. Since this data is directly derived from a file, it is a data artifact. Beyond the semantic differences, analysis results and data artifacts store different information. For instance, data artifacts may have associated OS accounts and analysis results have scores. This analysis result type has a score indicating its potential importance. Ingest modules continue to provide the analysis techniques to create these analysis results as well as extracting data. Analysis results can be associated with files or data artifacts. Analysis results have a type like hash set hit or keyword hit, a score indicating the relevance of the item in the investigation, an optional configuration denoting the settings from which the analysis result was derived, like a hash set name, an optional conclusion provided by the ingest module, and an optional justification for the conclusion. A score is comprised of two components, the significance and the priority. The significance is about the relevance of the investigation. Notable, otherwise known as bad, means the artifact or file is relevant. Likely notable, also known as suspicious, means the artifact or file is probably relevant. Likely none or probably good means the item is probably not relevant. None or good indicates that the item is not relevant at all. And unknown means that it is unclear what relevance the item has. Uh, sometimes the examiner needs to overrule the ingest module's significance. The analysis result has a priority to allow for the examiner to override the ingest module's significance. Normal priority is the priority of automatically assigned significance, like from an ingest module. Override is the priority of manual adjustments of that, of that significance. For instance, a Yara module marks a file as likely notable or suspicious, the priority of that score is normal since the score is assigned automatically by the ingest module. The user can override that score, making its significance none or good. In that instance, the none score has an override priority, making the score for the result none or good. Right now, the ability for a user to override a score is only available in cyber triage. 
files and data artifacts get an aggregate score based on its child analysis results. Every file and artifact starts with an aggregate score of unknown until it has some child analysis results attached to it. Here's how an aggregate score is determined for a file or data artifact. If a file or data artifact has an override score, that override score is used as the aggregate score, despite any other scores present. Uh, notable significance is considered first before none, and high confidence is considered first over lo low confidence. So the order of consideration goes notable, none, likely notable, likely none, and then unknown. So if there's a file with two analysis results, a malware scan with a score of none, and an executable path analysis result of likely notable, the aggregate score is none because none is considered first over likely notable. Here's some example scores provided by some ingest modules. A knowable hash set hit gets a score of notable and a known hash set hit gets a score of none. Keyword hits, interesting items, encryption suspected, and file extension mismatches get a score of likely notable. Encryption detected and Yara hits get a notable score. And notable tags get a notable score. All other tags get a likely notable score. Um, using analysis results in cyber triage is more mature, but autopsy has some ways to make use of analysis results. In autopsy, there are now separate sections for data artifacts and analysis results in the tree view. Uh, in the result viewer for autopsy, analysis results can be viewed in the score column. A red exclamation mark indicates notable and a yellow triangle indicates likely notable. You can also view analysis results in the content viewer by clicking on the analysis results tab. Uh, the viewer shows the aggregate score of the file or data artifact, and it also shows all of the child analysis results. There's some small changes that module writers need to make to take advantage of these new analysis results. As a quick aside, Autopsy makes it easy to write modules. You can start with one of our templates. Autopsy will pass files to the ingest module, and you can use our API to save them to the database, at which point results will show up in the UI and in reports. In previous versions of Autopsy, you would call new Blackboard artifact. Now you can create analysis result with new analysis result, providing a score. Autopsy handles the rest of the details, like calculating the aggregate score and updating the UI. Here is a Java example from the Autopsy ingest modules for creating a hash set hit. The code creates all the attributes for the analysis result, creates the analysis result adding the attributes, and then calls post artifact to trigger updates. Here's a Python example from one of the samples. Again, the code creates all the attributes for the analysis result, creates the analysis result adding the attributes, and then calls post artifact to trigger any updates. And I think that's it. Sorry, I always fumble here to find the, uh, the unmute button here. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Greg and Jay, uh, talking about kind of the, uh, the the ways that over the, the years we've figured out how to kind of achieve a bunch of this um, scoring capabilities uh, that we added in. Um, you know, it, it's kind of was, you know, maybe I've mentioned or, or not, right? I mean, in some ways the, the, the first parts of the middle part kind of concepts are, are fairly generic. Uh, and not unique to autopsy and cyber triage and hopefully kind of other tools can, um, you know, or in modules can kind of leverage on this, uh, you know, as well on these basic kind of concepts. Um, so it's pretty cool. So um, I, I do have one question though. Uh, there aren't any, any questions yet um, on the channel. There's a bunch of other discussions and cyber triage things like Chris uh, was kind of taking care of. Um, but on this topic, I have a question for you guys. I'm just making questions up. Um, so uh, this is a new API, new way of making uh, data artifacts versus analysis results, right? There's like 75 or 80, I think, uh, open source public modules out there uh, for autopsy. 
Uh, do those now just stop working since they aren't making these things or are they still going to work? Well, all of our, we've taken, uh, we've taken great pains to make sure everything is backwards compatible so that we can continue to work, but um, we can take advantage of new features if we use these new APIs. So basic takeaways, they'll still work, right? They'll just make, uh, what are they? they're data artifacts, right? They come up, they'll come up as data artifacts, I believe we decided. I think that's correct, yes. Okay, so, so, um, so yeah, so um, I think we are, we're good. So there's no other questions in here. Um, Man, it's all about the hair. Jeez, I'm gonna shave it next year or go mohawk. I'm gonna wear a wig next year, I think. So, um, all right. So, um, with that, if you have any questions, uh, plug them in. We'll uh, we'll answer them as we go along. We are a bit ahead of schedule here, but I think we're all right because our next speaker, I think, is is ready to go. So maybe we'll end the uh, the day a bit earlier, get a little bit longer longer of a break in here. So, um, so thanks for that. Thanks for Jay and Greg for that.